She begins her morning by donning a rubber apron and with a little help from a double soy latte, starts her daily journey into death. I'm so not in the mood for you. Listen, about that article... Not an article, a profile. The corpse lady, a woman to die for. The corpse lady, a woman who can't do the interview. No, don't worry. I promise to highlight your heart of gold and downplay the severed limb angle. This really isn't a good time, Mike. I'm busy, so... I know! What's going on, Ellie? What does it look like? Oh, it looks like you and, and him... Like none of your business. You should really just go right now. Wait, I meant I... I, 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 I what? What? Okay. I mean it, Mike. Fine. Instead, I almost got you both killed. Wait a minute, are you apologizing to me? Yes. But this is all my fault. The hell it is. Yes, it is. I should have done like you said from the beginning, kept my mouth shut, and Braxton never would have found William. A hundred people must have seen William get off that ferry. I overreacted. I should have just told you the truth from the beginning. No, you should have tied me up from the beginning. You know I can't keep a secret. Well, that's true. <sighs> he was my roommate's boyfriend. You don't have to explain. They dated all through medical school. I was more devastated when they broke up than she was. We kept in touch on and off over the years. He was... He was, he was a friend, and I'm the one. Nope. There'll never be another novel by Mike Dolan. No one's ever gonna love me, my so-called follow-up. I'm gonna die miserable and alone. Here you go, guys. I'm a sensitive guy. I don't have any disfiguring scars. Hey, Mike, when's the next book coming out? Forget about love. I just like to have sex one more time before I die. Oh, never, because I suck. I don't even have time for a woman. Why haven't you written another book, Mike? That's an interesting question, Glenn. I'm glad you asked it. Because I'm a news too busy, busy solving murders and crimes. Did you say something? Maybe you'd feel a little bit smaller if I told you that you're incredibly beautiful. I want to jump you. I have to pee. When I get back, we're going to figure out how to make Pitiful look attractive. Yeah. No. This is a classic existential crisis. You're both confronting your own mortality and at the same time realizing that some parts of your life don't equal up to anything truly meaningful. You're sexy when you talk, sorry. God, you know we're hung over. If you just got a point to make, then make it. Okay, what you both need to do is take a contrary action. Doing something completely unexpected will help you get to the truth of who you really are. Meaningless existence, shed, crisis, solve. When was the last time you took a contrary action? As a matter of fact, I'm about to push the boundaries of my own identity as a forensic workaholic by taking a painting class. I think what's going on between us runs deeper than friendship. You're right. You're weak from blood loss and hallucinating. I was covered by a sheet. I decided to take my own advice and do something I wouldn't ordinarily do. So your idea of contrary action is prancing around in a sheet in front of a bunch of strangers? You have all the charm of a rotting cadaver. Everything to do with jealousy and your own inability to take risks. You are incapable of pushing yourself beyond self-imposed limits. You posing for a bunch of art students is hardly challenging limits. Your limits are about having real connections with real people, which is exactly why you spend all your time with the aforementioned rotting cadavers. Transparent defensiveness. Turning yourself into a star reporter is hardly taking a risk. It is an easy and accessible... Everything I have is in there. Still no arrest. I'm a passionate person, right? You're my brother. I'd prefer to think of you as annoying. Who's Ann Palmer? My expose got vampires. They're everywhere, Seattle, California, the Midwest. These kids wear fangs and actually drink blood. Sarah, this isn't just a job, is it? I mean, there, there's art and passion in news reporting, right? So Ann Palmer is a vampire? Do you know her? Well, it seems I do. Only I know her as Jade Lafayette, not Ann Palmer from Olympia, Washington. I'll keep up the artistic passion and I might just give you page two. Painted with blood. This is so sick. He immortalizes them. God. Ellie! Wait, Mike! 
sexual relations with a girl who wears fangs. So don't tell anyone. Not even me. Two words, Freddy. Contrary action. One of us should. None of us really did, you know? It's, uh, it's just been so long for me, though, you know? So long. It's kind of scary. Yeah, it is. Do it anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't you have a deadline you gotta make? Yeah. I gotta get that story in. So you're gonna call her, right? I don't know. No, I gotta tell. Not even you. All right. Mm -hmm. See you around. Okay. Come on, Mike. It was a hell of a day. Can't we just excuse certain things? Is that what we should do? Should we ignore what we really think? Should we ignore what we said? Should we ignore the fact that neither one of us took a step remotely near any action contrary to who we are? I tried. It almost got me killed, no, but I... No, you didn't try, Ellie, and neither did I. Posing for a lunatic is no risk to you any more than me committing to my job. It's just one more way to detach and to continue to avoid connecting with anything that's real. Tomorrow, or laugh about it, or forget about it. 